The term CMOS stands for Complementary MOS. CMOS is one of the most popular technologies in the computer chip design and broadly used today to form integrated circuits. The main advantages of CMOS over NMOS and bipolar technologies is the much smaller power dissipation. Unlike NMOS or bipolar circuits, a complementary MOS circuit has no static power dissipation. The power is only dissipated when the circuit switches. This allows integrating more CMOS gates on an IC than through NMOS or bipolar technology resulting in much better performance. CMOS consists of P-channel MOS which is PMOS and N-channel MOS also called NMOS. So let us look at the structure of CMOS. At one end we have NMOS where we have two N plus pockets and P substrate. At the other end we have PMOS which has two P plus pockets and N type based substrate. The usual metallic contacts are taken out from the drain, source and gate terminals of both the MOSFETs. Both the MOSFETs are connected in series. The gate terminals are connected together and formed as input terminal. The drain terminals of both the MOSFETs are connected together and made as an output terminal. Source terminals are separate and we supply voltage across source and gate. So this is the basic structure of a CMOS. Now let us see how it works as inverter. We can understand it better through a simple circuit diagram of CMOS. This is the circuit diagram of CMOS. The input and output connections are the same as we saw in the structure. Inverter means it inverts the logic input. If you give input as logic 0, you will get logic 1 at output and if you give the input as logic 1, you will get a logic 0. So let's see how we can achieve this through CMOS. When we apply logic high or 1 at input, the gate voltage at PMOS will be at high voltage. But the source is also connected to a high voltage VDD in PMOS. So both the voltages cancel each other and no current flows. Therefore, the PMOS is in off mode. But at NMOS, the gate voltage will be high and the source is connected to the ground. This means the gate voltage is more than the threshold voltage of NMOS. This will switch on the NMOS. But the output terminal will be short circuited and connected to ground at NMOS. Because of this, the output will be zero. NMOS acts as if it is short circuited. Hence, the output is low or logic zero. This is case one where the logic one or high voltage at input gives the logic zero or low voltage at output. Moving on to the case two, we'll make the input logic zero or low voltage. In this case, the gate terminals of the PMOS is at zero volts and the source terminal is at higher voltage VDD. So the current flows in the PMOS circuit. Therefore, PMOS is switched on. But in NMOS, the gate voltage will become zero volts and the source is also at zero volts as it is connected to ground. Hence, the voltage is not enough to switch on the NMOS. Therefore, the NMOS is switched off. In this case, the output terminals acts like it is connected directly to VDD, the high voltage. So, the output will be high or logic 1. This is case 2 where the logic 0 or low voltage at the input gives the logic 1 or high voltage at output. This is how CMOS works as inverter and helps in many applications. To sum up, in this video, we learned the structure of CMOS which has PMOS and NMOS together and also understood how CMOS works as inverter when the logic is zero or high. In the next video, we'll look at another interesting device, silicon controlled rectifiers. See you there.